What are they? Hydrocarbons. They're carbons. They're not hydrocarbons. They're carbon and... Hydrogen. Mm, water. Water. There we go. Carbon and water, right? So when we look at carbohydrates, we see carbon and water. So when we set up the molecular structure of carbohydrates, we're looking for that carbon attached to a water. And how does that carbon attached to a water look? Awesome. It does look pretty awesome. But what do we expect to see? If there's my carbon, and that carbon is being branched out to two other parts of the molecule, wherever that goes, what are my other bonds? My other, how many bonds can carbon make? Four. Up to four, right? So what are my other two carbon bonds attached to? OH and H. OH and H, yeah, and that's where we get the water aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. Good morning. OH and H. So that's where we get the water, right, on this side, and then we get the carbon on the other side. So we get carbohydrates, right? So if you're looking around, what's the, the main carbohydrate that we looked at that we checked out? Oh, glucose. So in glucose, we had a ring structure. Right? And it looked, it had how many carbons? What was our, anybody remember our um, uh, molecular structure? C6, H12, O6. So we've got a, we see right here already, what does this sort of break down into? What does it reduce to? Water. Yeah, it's H2O, right? As far as we've got carbons and we've got waters. So if we look at that molecular structure, if we look at the way that the molecule is actually made up, <coughs> right? We've got our carbon attached to carbon. We all right over there? Fine. We're fine? Okay. All right. What joined up our ring here? Oxygen. There was an oxygen, yeah, there was an oxygen in there. Here's our oxygen. And then what do we have sticking off all over the place? Water. We have the water sticking out, right? Then up here, we also had a water sticking off of this guy. And we had two leftover spaces, yeah, that we couldn't put water, so what do we fill in there? Morning. Hydrogen. Yeah, we just pulled a couple extra hydrogen. And that was our glucose molecule. And based on what we were looking at last class, sort of what was important about the glucose molecule? What was important about carbohydrates in general? It can make bonds. Okay, and what type of bonds, or, or, or how, or why did our bonds made here? I don't know if you can answer any of those. Hydrogen bonds. We, we can form hydrogen bonds? Can we? Yeah. Does anybody remember if, if these guys can make hydrogen bonds? What causes oh. hydrogen bonding to happen? We talk about this in polarity, yeah, last day, but what is it? Like, what is it that we're looking for, what is it that we see? That we go, ah, oh, I think hydrogen bonding would have probably happen here. Okay, yeah, but even, even sort of before we start thinking about whether or not things are hydrophobic or hydrophilic, what we're looking at atoms and elements and different things like that to see, oh, hey, there's that. That probably means hydrogen bonding is pretty able to take place. See, uh, yeah, you're on the right track. We're looking for oxygen and or? Hydrogen. Okay, yeah, that's on the other end of the spectrum. Oxygen or nitrogen. Oxygen or nitrogen. If we see oxygen or nitrogen, what do they often do to electrons? They start pulling them towards them, right? Not necessarily stealing them, but sort of unequally sharing them, right? So anytime we see the oxygen, and especially when it's attached to what? Carbon. Or? Hydrogen. And hydrogen especially. Right? So when we see these oxygens all attached to these hydrogens, we can start going, hey, you know what, there's probably going to be some sort of hydrogen bonding going on, right? Because each one of these bonds in here is going to pull, the oxygen is going to pull the electrons slightly towards it away from the hydrogen, which makes the oxygen a little bit... Uh, yeah, a little bit negative because of its electronegativity, yeah. So the oxygen becomes a little bit more negative. The hydrogen sort of being left slightly without its own um, 
electron starts becoming slightly positive. So yeah, so we can see some hydrogen bonding going on in here. What does that do? What does hydrogen bonding mean for carbohydrates? What does it, what does it mean? What does it do? Why is it important? Or why does it matter? This is where we can start coming back to the hydrophobic hydrophilic sort of stuff. If it can hydrogen bond, what does it mean? Oh, okay, it can make starch or polyglucose, I guess you could call it. Yeah. Okay, but that's not that's not a result of the hydrogen bonding, that's the actual covalent bonding, which we'll come back to in a second. It can what? Um maybe, but yeah, I think you're thinking of the amino acids and the proteins. What? Uh, yes, definitely. We'll come back to that guy in a second. I think we'll look at that once we've got a little bit more of the actual starch set up. Say again. For these guys? We can make them polymers, but that doesn't have anything to do with the hydrogen bonding. What were we just saying? Julie a second ago said that we could, we that somehow we were thinking about hydrophilic and hydrophobic. The hydro, no. no, you guys are thinking about um, phospholipids right now in the membranes. But if we have sugar, and it is, are we saying that this is polar or nonpolar? Polar. If it can hydrogen bond, it must be, polar. it has polar bonds in it for sure, right? All of these oxygen-hydrogen bonds are polar bonds. And if there's, if we have some polarity, if we have some separation of charge, right? Some positive and some negative, then what does that mean about it in terms of, maybe in terms of water? Hydrophilic. It's soluble. It's hydrophilic. It dissolves in water. Right? Why was that? I know it's Monday morning. Come on here, people. Because water's what? Hydrophilic. Water. It's water filling. Water is water filling. Yeah, water does love water. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, the like, if it's polar, then it's like water, which can, like, that, have that hydrogen bond, so that they can bond with water, like, they can mix. Yeah, that's it, right? I mean, yeah. So water is polar as well, and glucose is, is polar, and like dissolves like, we say, right? So because glucose is a, has some polar bonds in it, right, and water has polar bonds in it, they can interact with each other, right? The positive parts of the glucose is going to be attracted to the negative parts of the water, and the negative parts of the glucose are going to be attracted to the positive parts of the, the water, and that's going to allow glucose to dissolve inside. So hydrogen bonding, um, Enables glucose. Come on. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Not really, that's all you get. Uh, enables glucose to dissolve in water. We call that hydrophilic. Right? And that's a good thing. It means when you're having your cup of coffee or cup of tea in the morning, you some sugar in it, if that's what you'd like, and it will be sweet, and you're not going to have to, like, you know, take a bite of ch sugar and then drink some of your tea and have the two of them separate. <laughs> They'll dissolve into each other. But it's also, I mean, sugars, we need sugars inside of our bodies, right? We just talked the other day, okay, a little bit, we were talking about the circulatory system, right, and carrying oxygen, right, to the cells. Well, what else is, is the blood also carrying to the cells? Carbohydrates. Sugar. Yeah. Sugar. We talked about oxygen being carried to the cells, right? But glucose is also being carried to the cells. It's just not coming from the lungs. Where is that coming from? From food, which goes through our digestive system, right? Which we're going to talk about soon, right? So our digestive system is carrying that sugar. And where does it carry the sugar? In the blood. And what is the blood made up of? <laughs> Oh, Monday is hurting us right now. <laughs> blood is mostly made up of, just like everything else in the body, water. water. 
water, water, water. Your cells are mostly made up of water too, right? Everything is water. So because sugar dissolves in water, that's good. We can deliver the sugar to the body, right? To the cells of the body. And the sugar will dissolve in the cells once they're out of the blood. And, and that is a good thing. It's good for life and it makes things work. So we've got glucose. We've established the fact that we have some polar bonds here which help it be hydrophilic, right? But then what is all this talk that we've been going on about making polymers of this? How do we do that? Bonding, what type of bonding? Covalent bonding. Covalent bonding. How do we know it's covalent bonding? Because it's all non-metals that we're dealing with here, right? No metals, all non-metals. Okay? Remember, we're always looking at hydrogen for us as being a non-metal, right? Even though it's way over on the far side of the periodic table. So, how do we get these guys to stick together? If I have one glucose molecule, remember we drew them like this the other day? Put my, or not the other day, but way back when. What do we do? What, what? Yell at me. Yes, almost, 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 almost. Let me write that down and let's talk our way through it. So if we got, here's our water that's over on the far side of that guy, and then we've got another water coming from the one on the other side. Yes. Who was sticking together? that little oxygen bridge that gets stuck in the middle, right? Don't forget that oxygen bridge. It's the OH and the OH that are coming together, right? And one of those guys gets plucked out and the other oxygen gets left behind. So if we come in there and start stealing stuff, right, we're going to end up breaking this bond, remember here? We're going to break the bond that's in the middle here. Right? It could be the other way around. We could break this bond and break in between there. It doesn't matter. We're going to take one of the OHs and just the H, and we're going to leave the oxygen behind. Right? Because if you keep studying uh, biology or chemistry, you'll learn more about why that happens. But for now, it doesn't really matter. Right? So then what we end up doing is we pull out the H2O here, and what we're left with is... Yeah, oxygen looking to, with a hand that's like, hey, what, I'm not, don't get to hold on to anybody else, right? And carbon over on this side is doing the same thing. Well, what, what about me? <laughs> and they, they end up getting together. Right? So, looking something like this. From that, with that process, what can we continue to do? Make more, add more on, add another one, add another one, right? We can be adding them all over the place. We can be adding more onto this end, building the chain in this direction. We can be adding more onto this end, building the chain in that direction. What type of chain is that going to build if we just add to both ends? It's going to be a, but not a polypeptide, a polysaccharide, right? It's going to be a polysaccharide, and what's its shape going to be? Linear. It's going to be linear. And this is something you guys were saying just a second ago, right? If it's linear, then what does that mean? Why is it hard to break? Hydrogen bonds. Yeah, we start getting layers, right? And they fit nicely together. They sit nicely on top. And then, what does this do in that situation? Helps holds together. Yeah, it starts holding all those layers together, right? Because there's hydrogen bonding going on between the bottom of these guys and the top of these guys and the bottom of these guys and the next the next layer, right? And it pulls all those layers nice and tight together. And what does that do once we pull them all together? It makes it hard to break. And what does hard to break mean? 
provides strength. Strong provides strength. Okay, so that's good for what type of molecule do you do we cellulose, right? Cellulose. Which is good for cell walls in plants. Right? That sacking provides strength. And what else does it do in terms of temperature? Yeah, it has a higher boiling point. Right? It raises the boiling point. Because it because more it takes more energy to break it apart because there's so many hydrogen bonds across that that length of those layers, right? That it's hard, you gotta put a lot of energy in to destabilize those bonds and to get those layers to break apart, right? So we can make great structures. If we end up having, not only though, could we make these branches go out in opposite sides, right? But we could also have them going out this way, right? I mean, we could have that going on down here or down here. We can make these weird funky shapes, right? When we get those weird funky shapes, it becomes easier to break down. What were a couple of examples of those that we saw? One of them we have in our body that long polysaccharide. But it's not a big, long chain. It's a very branched molecule. You know what that one was called? Glycogen. Glycogen. Right? And what was the purpose of having all the branches in it, rather than it being linear, like cellulose? What was the purpose of having all those branches in glycogen? So it breaks down easier. Why do we want it to break down easier? In cellulose, we didn't want it to break down. Because it provided structure and support for us. Yeah, we're kicking out all those uh, glucoses, right? We want to chop it down as fast as we can so that we can get the energy out of it, right? Which is why things like chocolate bars, right, that have simple sugars in them, you get energy from them really quickly. And things like rice that has uh, starch in or breads, right? They have starch, which is less branched than glycogen, right? But it gives you energy, but over a longer period of time because it's a little bit harder to break down. The glucose and sucrose and stuff that you get out of the chocolate bar is basically already broken down. Right, away we go. How are we doing there, okay? Any other questions? We're going to switch over to lipids here if there's any, nothing else that we want to look at. This one is definitely more complex than lipids, except for the membrane part. So we'll jump pretty quickly into that. We okay? Fats or fats or lipids, I guess, more appropriately. What are they made up of? Hydrocarbons. Yeah, these guys are generally hydrocarbons, right? Hydrocarbons. And instead of being carbohydrates, instead these guys mean what? Hydro means? Ah, that was hydrate. Yeah, this time it means hydrogen, yeah. So it's a little bit tricky. And carbon means? Carbon. Oh, you guys are amazing. Good, yeah. So these are just hydrogen and carbon stuck together, right? Hydrocarbons, remember, we're just chains of carbon with hydrogen surrounding the outside, right? We talked about things like the, what you find in your, um, like in the gas that we drive in our cars, right? And we'd have something like hexane. And hexane, if you remember, was just a carbon attached to a carbon attached to a carbon. Anybody know how many carbons I need to have? Six. Six of them. Right? And then what was attached all around the outside? Hydrogen. Just hydrogen, right? Yeah. And then what was what we were talking about? We took this, this hydrocarbon chain, and I want to jump sort of straight into the idea of um, of phospholipids. What was going on there? What are these things good for? Nonpolar. These okay. So these are nonpolar. We have all kinds of nonpolar bonds here, right? So we see nonpolar. So that makes them what? Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. Okay. So why is that useful? So we can build a membrane. We can build a membrane. Why, why? Why do we want to use hydrophobic things to build a membrane? So water yeah, we want to set up a barrier, right? We want some sort of way of blocking the transfer of water from one place to another, right? So well, I shouldn't even say it that way. It wasn't that we wanted something to do that. It's that 
the only way for a cell to come into existence is if you have some way to separate inside from outside, right? So cells evolve because of molecules like this, right? If everything was hydrophilic all over the place, then you would just have a big solution. The ocean would just be a big solution. Which it is, but we wouldn't have any way to make life. So great for making membranes. Um. <laughs> right, they can separate the water, they can provide a barrier. Okay. And keep some water on one side and one water on the other side. And we looked at some of these molecules, we said, what were the, what were the, the slightly more um, complex structures than just a straight up hydrocarbon? Remember, so there were some of them, we sucked a little bit of uh, some oxygen, and do you remember what those were? We sucked up an oxygen, double bonded oxygen, and then an, an oxygen and a hydrogen. But not quite, not quite that fatty complex. Acid. Fatty acid, right? Remember we had the fatty acids? And the fatty acids just looked sort of like this guy, right? Everybody remember these guys? Right, and what did that mean about this end over here? It, this end was polar, but what about this end over here? This was nonpolar. So what did that mean about this end? Soluble in water was actually attracted to water, right? Because of hydrogen. Hydrogen bonding, because of the hydrogen bonding going on at that end, right? So that end's being pulled towards water. And what about the uh, the fatty tail? Not soluble in water, hydrophobic, right? And was trying to get itself away. And this is where we started to see. Right? That's sort of that first type of membrane being formed, right? And we looked at it, and we sort of saw the little, I don't know, I think we drew them sort of with the single, right? And when they're put in water, they form that, that circle going around, right? Or maybe it didn't even have that inside, if you get rid of that guy. Oh, that's not the right one. Right, they just went all around with tails, tails pointing in. And then we upgraded. What did we upgrade to? Phospholipids. And what was the difference there? Bigger. They were bigger, right? Today's day two. Yeah, you got it. Just give us a second here. Thanks. So, in the phospholipid, what was the difference between the fatty acid and the phospholipid? You said it's bigger. More stable. Why? What was going on about it? It was two, two pieces, sort of. Two tails. Yeah, it had the head and then two tails coming off the back, right? So we had two of those guys, right? Remember, those guys were coming off the back side, and they were attached, though, now to sort of that center piece. And then what else was going on there? What about their head? It was a bigger bit. It was kind of like one of these guys, but it was a modified version of it. And it ended up having to switch around and going the other way. Right? Everybody remember that guy? With the big phosphate group that was buried inside of that guy? But because the phosphate was charged, it didn't like the nonpolar tails. Right? So it tried to spin around and tried to get away from it. And then those guys work themselves into the membrane the same way as the fatty acids do. But they're just bigger, they're more stable on there, or they make the membrane more solid. Each side can There you go. Happy Monday, everybody. Keep working. Keep working. What are we down to? Three weeks? This week? Two more? And then exams?